Welcome to the World United. Welcome to the World United. I am going to now introduce our next speaker. <clears throat> we have with us Balaram Das, who is a servant of the servant of God and keeper of Dharma. Balaram Das has been taught by his spiritual father to disclose to the people at large the nature of our spiritual identity and the need to integrate our identity into our personal and communal lives. Balaram is well-versed in spiritual knowledge of the Vedas, and if I mispronounce that, please correct me, as well as modern-day business, economic, and legal information and implementation. So Balaram is here to talk to us today about our spiritual identity human sojourn. Please, Balaram. Thank you very much, Benjamin. And uh, uh, I also want to thank Charles for uh, the great discourse that he had. Um, a lot of the things that he talked about uh, uh, are very on point, especially uh, in regards to the religion and the traditions, which I will be touching on a little bit. So uh, I will be bouncing off a little bit about what Charles said because he laid it out very clearly. Uh, I don't want to repeat uh, the same things, but uh, I first want to uh, dedicate this this short discourse to my Guru Maharaj, Sri Brahmaharishi Sandeepani, for uh, uh, giving me the ability to speak on these topics confidently. Uh, and I dedicate this uh, uh, this information and hopefully the benefit that this information will bring, uh, not only to my Guru Maharaj, but to my beautiful uh, ladies, Sita Devi Dasi and Bhakti Devi Dasi, to my family. And uh, to everybody who's watching this, I hope that it brings you some joy and some solace and some understanding of where we really are today. So uh, I'm going to get into the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, the, the, the one and only problem that we have in the world and that all other problems stem from is uh, this illusion and confusion that we have about our real identity. 99.9% uh, .9 of the people on the planet simply believe that they are the bodies that they are operating. They believe that they are the, uh, the mental storylines and constructs that the subtle mind-body creates about themselves. Uh, they believe that they are uh, you know, part of a specific tribe or group of people in the material world, American, Indian, you know, African, you know, they believe that they are a part of a certain type of religious organization, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, you know, they believe that they are uh, their occupation, right? I'm a doctor, I'm a dentist, you know, they believe that they are even their sex, you know, I'm male, female, I'm neither, I'm both, right? All these things are, uh, while they're not necessarily fake or not real they are temporary right so in the truest sense they are unreal in the the only things that are real are those that are permanent and so uh but fear not we uh those are not us they are just our vehicles they are uh our our utilities we are truly what's called the the atma in the sanskrit tradition which means uh the the spirit soul or the true self and uh the goal of the human life is to remember that identity as the spirit soul as the true self and to remember our spiritual relationship with the supreme self or the super soul or the paramatma in my tradition in sanatana dharma uh, is known as bhagavan Sri krishna and uh, that word means uh, the all-attractive enjoyer. And so, uh, and that being is not just an idea, and it's not just uh, uh, a vague light or a, uh, a conceptual idea of consciousness. That being has its own personality, just like you and I. The only difference being that uh, that being has an infinite degree of good qualities, while we have a specific, tangible, finite degree of qualities uh, that we operate in. 
And we have the ability to cultivate those and change those as we change our habits and our behaviors. But at the end of the day, we have this uh, unique, special relationship with that supreme being and all of our problems and all of our uh, issues that we have in life stem from us forgetting that fact. And so just to, uh, you know, jump off of what, you know, Charles said before uh, a certain time period and the Vedas go back millions of years. So right now, about 5,000 years ago is when um, the Srimad Bhagavatam was recited. And that is when the Kali Yuga began or the age of quarrel and strife before this all religions were considered one and the same. They all had the same goal, which was to cultivate that knowledge and that uh, bhava or that mood of devotion to the Supreme Lord. Uh, it was after this time period that these different traditions started to branch off in what their intentions were and uh, their overall goal. You know, certain religions have taken a stance of benefiting people on a material level and not necessarily getting to the nitty gritty on the spiritual truths, which we're at today, which is why so many people are uncomfortable with the religions that are offered to them uh, in the current age. It used to be, for example, those who were devotees of Lord Shiva, um, it was understood that Lord Shiva was also known as Shambho, and he was the manifestation of the vision of Sri Krishna when looking upon Durga Devi. Right? It was understood that he was an extension of Krishna and that those who were devotees of, of Lord Shiva were also devotees of Lord Krishna and etc. All the great masters spoke of you know the Heavenly Father. We know the six have done so. We know that Christ did so. You know, Jesus's title Christ was you know given to him uh, by his father. You know that word Christ comes from the word Krishna, the Christos there in the middle in Greek. Uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad spoke that he was a servant of God. Right? All these, uh, all these, you know, Lord Buddha was established in the Srimad Bhagavatam first canto as being an incarnation of Krishna. So all of these religions were had the same uh, uh, goal. And then over time, after the, the founder and the masters had left, uh, the people who took over, you know, we don't know exactly who they are sometimes. Uh, we can get into the historical connotations of that in a different discussion. But, uh, you know, certain information was left out, some new information was added, and it caused confusion in the people. And, you know, what Charles has spoken on before, false evidence appearing real, now we have certain information that's in there may, that may not necessarily correspond with the absolute truth. And so the goal of our human soldier, of man's soldier, is to uh, cultivate that loving relationship with God. And uh, God had designed a perfect system for us to live in, in, in the material world, in society. It's called Varnashram Dharma. They have, you know, a division of uh, of people's uh, occupation and then a division of people's stages in life. Very briefly, it's Brahmacharya, then Grihasta, then Vanaprasta, then Sannyasa. You have the celibate student life, then you have family life, and then you have semi-retired life, and then you have fully renounced life. And uh, the people generally go through this stage. And then you have the occupations, you have the Shudra class, which is the, you know, working class, the mercantile class. You have the Vaishya class, the business owner class, the Kshetriya class, the administrative class, the kings, the princes, the warriors. And then the Brahmana class, the intellectual class, or the, uh, uh, the priest class, you know, as uh, for lack of a better word. Now, these divisions were designed to fit people into their specific... Uh, uh, talents and abilities and their uh, their uh, natural inclinations and they would support each other you know the the business class would support the other classes in their spiritual endeavors they would feed them they would you know give them the resources that they need to maintain their body so they can continue their work 
Um, and it was true community, you know, and now we have the material manifestation of that, of communism and socialism that's losing that devotional element that's based on a purely sectarian platform. And so all these issues that we have in life are all coming from our forgetfulness of this fact of our relationship with God. And then we cultivate all these artificial uh, ways of living that cause us our own pain and our own problems. And so Charles is very correct about uh, um, having to have some sort of uh, system in place or some sort of routine that we can go internal uh, to be able to uh, cultivate the subtler understanding of this truth. In my tradition, uh, that, that meditation method is through vibrating and chanting uh, the sacred mantras, the, namely the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, and that's a, that is a call to the Supreme Being saying, O oh Krishna, O oh Supreme Energy of Krishna, I am embarrassed by my material condition. Please engage me in your loving and devotional service. So it's a request. Please engage me. Please give me the knowledge that I need in order to uh, operate as your servant and as the servant of your servants. And uh, you know, this having this key principle in the background of all our modern day uh, facilities is going to bring us success and joy like we've never seen before. And the Bhagavatam in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita clearly states that we are in the golden age of this Kali Yuga. While it's typically the age of quarrel and strife, um, 500 years ago, Sri Chaitanya's sojourn on this earth initiated a, a brief 10,000 year period of, of spiritual advancement for the people. All you have to do is chant and vibrate the holy names. You know, in the Christian, it's the hallelujah. The Buddhists have Om Mani Padme Hum. The Muslims have Alhamdulillah. You know, all these, these mantras that are meant to be uh, directed towards the Supreme Lord, you know, these vibrations get, will give us everything that we need. We don't have to separately cultivate knowledge in Vairagya like we did in uh, previous ages. In this age, we're given the gift of, of devotion directly. We don't have to uh, cultivate uh, separate good qualities in order to realize this truth. Because of the, it's an age of quarrel, we are now pushed towards, uh, you know, the solution. We're, we're okay with not going through kind of the jumping through all these hoops and doing all these difficult meditations and practices to find this, uh, to find the, the absolute truth. Devotion is all we need. And once we have that, everything else will fall into place. We'll naturally be inclined to engage in Varnashram Dharma, which has existed since eternity, to uh, fit ourselves in the appropriate uh, uh, channel of expression in our human soldier. Um, and, you know, things that people are normally having trouble with, the economic system and money and the fiat currency and banking, the, the legal system and the you know, requirement of an esquire and a private club called the bar, the, uh, the political uh, guise of these politicians as leaders when they're really business owners. All these things are happening because we've forgotten our identities. We're, we're so uh, attached to our bodily identifications that we're being promised solutions on that material platform that while on the surface may bring us some temporary relief and happiness, but are really impregnated with misery. The only joy in this world that we're finding is whenever our miseries temporarily stop. For us, that's happiness. Uh, but the true happiness is the soul's expression with the Supreme Lord and with the devotees of God and with, you know, God's children. You know, uh, speaking from experience, uh, when, you know, my daughter is, is playing with someone else and learning from, uh, you know, wise people about the truth of our spiritual identity, it makes me much more happy seeing my child uh, uh, being happy and being cultivated properly than it would for someone to come to me directly and give me those things. And so in that same way, us serving each other uh, is going to naturally bring us the blessings from the father of those children, that being, you know, Lord Krishna. And so uh, I, I want to, you know, close with saying that uh, 
if we focus on the truth, the absolute truth, that we are souls having a human experience and that this is not our first go around. We have existed forever and we will continue to exist. And the word, you know, death or die in Latin just means to split. So it just means to split from what we're not anymore. Uh, fo focusing on that truth and cultivating that happiness that we live eternally, it'll rid ourselves of all the fear. Because the only true fear that we have is fear of death. All the other fears that we have are kind of built off of that fear of no longer being able to exist or be able to uh, enjoy our life. And so uh, cultivating that, uh, we will be able to solve every problem that we've manufactured uh, since the dawn of our material lives. So with that, I close. And thank you, Benjamin. Wow. Thank you, Balaram. That was a crash course for me. My goodness. Wow. You used the phrase, all attractor enjoyer. Did I get that right? Yes. Yes. Bhagavan means the supreme enjoyer and Krishna means all attractive. That stuck out to me. All attractor enjoyer. I'm going to, I'm going to percolate on that and uh, spend some time with that. <clears throat> Down. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing such a wealth of inf uh, information and knowledge, Palaram.